Before becoming the Aerial Lift Bridge, the Canal Park Duluth landmark was originally the Aerial Ferry Bridge. It was opened in 1905 as the only transporter bridge ever to be built in North America. With CAD modeling, rendering, and animation, we can recreate realistic views demonstrating how the original bridge would have looked. A transporter bridge, the common European term used to describe this style, consists of two towers, a steel girder framework and span, and a gondola cargo platform. A transporter bridge was less expensive than an adjustable height roadway, yet still allowed uninterrupted maritime traffic. Between the years 1893 and 1915, a mere 30 transporter bridges were built in the entire world. Cargo limitations and the exploding use of automobiles made the popularity of such bridges short-lived. Only eight others still operate today. Three exist in the United Kingdom. Middlesbrough, Newport, and the Royal Victoria. Germany has two, Rendsburg and Aachen, one in rochefort France, one in Portugal, Spain, one in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and the only one in North America, built in Duluth, Minnesota. The Twin Ports, originally, was only a single port. Duluth shipping traffic had to travel up the east side of Superior to reach their destinations. The bay was shallow, foggy, and difficult to navigate, causing several groundings. This inspired businessmen to fund an essential project for the future of Duluth. In 1871, a canal was cut through the seven-mile-long Minnesota Point sandbar. Now lake traffic had a direct route into Duluth docks. Duluth became the furthest inland port in the world and the busiest port on the Great Lakes. Out of concern the new canal may affect the flow of the St. Louis River and damage the natural entry, the Army Corps of Engineers required a dike be built between Rice's Point and Minnesota Point. It quickly fell into disrepair and was eventually removed. The new Duluth Canal transformed the Minnesota Point Peninsula into an island. A suspension footbridge of questionable safety was constructed, as ferry services could only run seasonal due to ice. Several bridge and tunnel designs were floated over the next two decades. Finally, in 1891, the city accepted a lift bridge proposal by John Alexander Lowe Waddell. However, objections from the U.S. War Department shot the idea down. Waddell went on to build his bridge anyhow, in Chicago. The Halstead Street Bridge crossing over the Chicago River opened in 1894. Inspired by the European model, engineer C.A.P. Turner had a new design approved in 1901. Duluth would build the only transporter bridge in North America. In 1902 the contract went to the Duluth Canal Bridge Company, but they were not up to the task. Plagued with funding issues and obtaining materials, the contract lapsed in May 1903 with little more than a foundation in place. The project remained idle until July 1904. Modern Steel Structural Company of Waukesha, Wisconsin picked up the new contract and quickly resumed construction. The first gondola crossing took place on February 23, 1905. The new Duluth Aerial Ferry Bridge could transfer a gondola loaded to 65 tons over the 390-foot span in just 75 seconds. Due to the explosion of automobile traffic by the mid-1920s, it became obvious the transport gondola design was entirely inadequate. By 1927 there was a new proposal to re-engineer the bridge. A lift bridge designed by engineer John L. Harrington. Harrington was a former partner of Waddell, who submitted the 1891 design. Harrington's bridge was remarkably similar. The re-engineered Duluth lift bridge we see today was built by the Kansas City Bridge Company. The gondola crossed for the last time on July 1, 1929, and six months later the new lift bridge opened. The 24-year lifespan of the Duluth Aerial Ferry Bridge had officially come to an end. 
The Duluth Aerial Lift Bridge has now stood for nearly 120 years. But often forgotten is the first quarter century of this structure, when even at its beginning was one of the most unique bridges on Earth. 